Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Axis of Trader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great uh, week of trading. Oh, hopefully everybody has a great start to their holiday. Uh, if you are new to the channel, uh, the broadcast goes out uh, Monday through Wednesday. Uh, Thursday night, I take the day, the night off just to kind of recharge my brain so I could be 100% uh, for Friday and then on the weekend. So if you are new, we welcome you to uh, like and subscribe to the channel so you could get uh, pretty much an up uh, updated view of the markets on, on a daily basis, but more important, an unbiased view uh, from the trading point of view, right? If you're an investor, you're probably going to get zero uh, zero value out of this channel. Again, we're not talking about investing. Uh, I don't know where stocks are going to be you know, a week from now, let alone uh, three weeks from now or three years from now. We're just literally uh, taking the data uh, every single night from the previous night's research and applying it to the next day. So hopefully uh, you guys continue to support and get a lot of value from this channel. So let's talk about it, right? So markets, um, you know, the markets have been very, very particular in digesting data. Um, if you guys remember all the way going back to, and this will be a nice little segue to the week ahead. If you guys remember the November, uh, the November CPI reading came out it was a really, really big number, right? A uh, really big number. The market um, really embraced this number and had a really good three, four day run. You know, like everything else stops or at least pauses into supply, uh, starts to come in and starts to digest. The problem is uh, every single time that there is a positive mention, and it seems these days that every big move, every big really exaggerated move either comes from a piece of data, uh, i.e. a jobs number, PPI, CPI, or uh, Powell randomly uh, having you know intimate thoughts throughout the day, right? As you can see that, here's the CPI number, here is the Powell candle, and even on Thursday, a little bit of jobs data actually broke a five-day losing streak, but we'll get to that uh, in a second. So the, the, the weirdest part about uh, what's been going on, usually when you reclaim the 50-day moving average, and you can see here the light blue line represents the 50-day, you usually go on a pretty big run, right? So here's the last time we reclaimed the 50-day moving average, uh, had a four-day run similar to this last time, retraced, tested the 50-day, and started rallying again for the next month and a half. We didn't do that, right? We, we haven't done that yet, right? Or, you know, maybe we just won't do that at all. But so far, we've had that three, four day run, right? Back test into support, and then just really having a hard time getting through this little baby channel that it's set on the CPI highs, even despite uh, more, you know, notable, you know, good talk of containing or controlling inflation from the PAL camp, we're kind of right back down to the bottom of the range here. And you know, usually consolidation is a good thing, right? I, I you know, I've always maintained stocks just can't go straight up. They need to breathe, right? They need to breathe. They need to digest. They need to get their le uh, legs under them, and they can finally start going higher. But the problem is with this latest move is after the initial move, whether it's on data or Fed talk. The market kind of kind of comes back and engulfs that previous candle, and that's starting to be a little bit more of a concern, right? Because again, now we are from you know we're talking about a month in, right? The CPI candle was November the tenth. We are presently December tenth, a full month before, and we, we're we're kind of dis, you know doing this distribution, but the majority of this distribution is sitting here right at the bottom of the channel of the last latest move. If we were distributing above here and here and here and here, that would be fine. But it's starting to concern, and it should start to concern um, the bull side of how long it's taking to kind of get back out through this consolidation. Now, again, is it possible we do so uh, this week? Again, we have uh, we have another uh, CPI reading, right? We have another CPI reading uh, this week, right? And then we have a Fed meeting this week. So we have two major catalysts that could potentially, you know, rip this, you know, rip this whole conversation apart, start attacking the top of the channel, clear out this 296 in the queues, and we're, you know, we're off and running uh, into the 306 supply uh, on the queues. But again, there, there's a flip side to that, right? There's, there's, always a, a, there's always an area that you have to play devil's advocate. And I believe as a trader, 
you have to play devil's advocate. You can't just look at the market through rose-colored glasses like we talk about all the time and turn around and say, well, this is what I want, right? Internally, subconsciously, I want the market to go higher. I, you know, I have positions. And again, if you're an investor, uh, this is completely, completely you know, it has nothing to do with you. But if you are an investor and you're trapped in positions, of course you want the market to go higher. But as, as a trader, and if you trade both sides of the market, it really shouldn't make that big of a deal which way the market is going and which way the trend is going as, as long as there is a trend. And you can see here, we're kind of stuck into this channel here uh, for over a month. Well, it's going to be a month. It's going to be over a month starting on Monday. But the point is we've only had two consecutive days, right? Two consecutive days in this whole channel, this whole month that we, we, we kind of improved on price action. That's kind of a big deal. And if you look at last week, right, you know, we, you know, throughout the, you know, throughout the videos, we kept on talking about this bottom channel here, right? This, you know, this 279, 280, you know, level on the queues. And every single time the market tries to uh, get above that channel, get smack right bound. But the good part, at least for the bulls right now, they continue to defend this bottom channel, right? You see this whole bottom channel, it keeps on stopping literally at the same place, that 7980 area, and it keeps on, there's a whole battlefront. Even on Friday, when they started, you know, when they started the day, it looked really, really good, right? It looked like it was gonna, is going to uh, price improve on the previous day's jobs number, at least jobs data, but the bulls failed at the, you know, failed at the intermediate range just to kind of roll over. And if you look at the, you know, if, if you look at the final tally throughout the week, it's, you know, it's, it's not great, right? You know, S&P fell uh, another 3%, the Dow was down about 3%, and NASDAQ uh, gave up uh, 4%. Uh, what was mo most notably, uh, or most noticeable, uh, above like that, that rally that we had on Thursday into Friday, there was only a couple of stocks that technically got out of the previous day's range, right? That one was, well, at least from the tech stock point of view, that was NVIDIA, right? That was NVIDIA, that was Netflix, right? That was Netflix, and a lesser name that I really don't pay a lot of attention to, but it, it, again, it's a vi viable chart in the NASDAQ 100, and that was Workday. And if you look at every single stock that had updates, right? Updates um, in the technology space, throughout the week, they were just up, right? There were dead cap bounces going into supply and getting faded. So for example, right, Apple looked good, right? It looked good, it got out of the range, look what happened, it got stopped at supply, rolled over. Microsoft, right, looked, you know, looked fine, like it was ready to go. Again, stuffed at the five day moving average, rolled over. You had Amazon that just couldn't even rally, okay? You had Google that couldn't even rally. You had Meta that couldn't even rally. You had AMD that couldn't even rally. And there's a long and there's a long laundry list of technology names, especially in the Nasdaq 100, that just could not price approve, uh, improve, especially when the Nasdaq was taking out the highs of the day for two days in a row. Finally, got stopped the supply. So you know that, that that you have to, as a trader, you have to start putting the pieces to the puzzle, right? And again, I, I don't know where the market's going to be. Nobody knows where the market's going to be. You know, even on Monday, right? As we say all the time, the only thing we can do is prepare, right? Only thing we can do is prepare and see based on how the charts are closing on Friday close and based on how they're setting up macro, right? Especially on the cues, we're making our, you know, we're making our choices, we're making our decisions based on technical analysis. And here's something that we have to really appreciate, right? The 50-day moving average is going to be the ultimate line in the sand. I, I've, I've always maintained, especially for the last week or so, no matter if you're trading to the upside, to the downside, I think any healthy rally or any continuation of a potential healthy rally needs to always retest the 50-day. So for example, here is a perfect example of reclaiming the 50-day, right? Had a four or five-day move, back testing to the 50-day, and then rally resumed right so we haven't done that yet okay and usually with that usually what that happens it usually happens within the first you know week after putting in a short term uh a short term i don't use the word short term top but a short term exhaustion cycle right and this has gone a month a month so the longer we can't price improve on what we saw reclaiming the 50-day moving average the higher probability that hey we are going to test the 50-day moving average but here's the sequence of events that you don't want to see, right? I do still believe that the first move into the 50-day moving average will hold, right? I do believe that. I do believe that the bulls will hold because price action, historical data, if you go through your charts, you'll see after uh, a reclaim of a major moving average, the first retest usually does hold. The bigger picture is what happens if it doesn't, right? And, you know, we've been talking about the scenario of what happens if it doesn't 
But we said, you know what, let's not put the cart in front of the horse. Let's see if it gets there first. But the longer time goes by and the longer that the bulls can't, you know, can't sustain a next leg higher, this is becoming more and more you know, probable or likely, right? That the first time they do test the 50-day moving average, and now we're only four points away on the Qs, which is basically nothing. You could have one gap down, uh, you know, one gap down, you could get there. But the question is, the longer it sits there and starts kind of grinding lower, grinding lower, grinding lower, again, assuming that the CPI number doesn't come in gangbusters like it did on November, you know, in the November reading, and Powell doesn't set the stocks into orbit, right? We're just assuming that doesn't happen, right? It might happen, it might not, we don't know, right? But the point is, we have to always be prepared for the worst case scenario. So here's the worst case scenario, okay? And I don't care if you're a trader or investor, but here is the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is we close below 278. 278 will be the 50 day moving average. We close below 278, Again, you don't have to look far, right? And this is kind of the, whole, the first kind of um, step to being a, a, tech, a, a tech, tech, right? A, a, a technical analysis trader. First close of, below the 50-day moving average, you could see what happens, right? And you know, it, you could see what happens here, right? You have a long distribution underneath and starts a really big downward cycle that ended. It started on uh, in August and ended in November 10th, right? It's a, it's a long time. So the last thing the bulls want to do is close below 278 because if we do close below 278 you can see with your eyeballs and again the basics of test technical analysis sometimes without the data without the uh you know without the moving averages and all that stuff is having your eyeballs so you can see what how much pressure potentially you could have in the downward cycle if we do close above the below the 50-day moving average so that's something you want to definitely keep an eye out for this week right so guys write this number down 278 is going to be the line in the sand okay i don't care how emotional you are you think that you're smarter than the market. You think you're smarter. Hey, Dan, you're an idiot. Okay, that's all great. But write down this number, right? You're not going to, you know, not everybody's going to like you. But this number you have to appreciate and you have to respect. 278 is the line in the sand for the bulls and the bears. If the bulls hold, we're going to go back higher. If the bears hold, well, there's a whole sequence of events that, again, if you are uh, an immature child that don't believe in technical analysis, don't respect it, you're going to see it. And again, it doesn't mean this is the end of the bull run. Of course, historically, through 100 years, we're going to be probably higher 10 years from now. We're talking about it day to day, right? Day to day, week to week, month to month, right? We're not predicting. I mean, nobody's predicting anything. This is just basic common, uh, common sense and technical analysis. So any build below the 278 level, um, it's not a good thing, right? It's not a good short-term thing. And sometimes that short-term things turns into a four or five day, four or five month uh, scenario, but if the bulls hold uh, the big number going into this week, at least taking baby steps, right? We're not talking about 296, the top of the channel. We're talking about the top of the channel for the last week, right? And the top of the channel for the last week where the bulls got rejected is this 286. So what the bulls need to do, right? We already know what the bears need to do, reclaim 278 to the bottom. What the bulls need to do is reclaim at least 286 on the close. Because if we can reclaim 286 on the close, then you have measured potential to 289, 291, 294, and obviously any close above 296, Santa Claus is not coming with coal, he's coming with a lot of uh, Christmas presents. So it's a very, very uh, important week. So, you know, we, know, we don't know what's gonna happen with Powell, right? A lot of people are betting, well, Powell's gonna save the day again. Well, Powell's already tried to save the day X amount of times, it's only amount of times that he can save the market, right? The CPI, and it, we've seen now historical days of both, both downside and upside action, right? So here's a massive downside CPI reading, here is a massive upside C C CPI reading, right? Here is a massive downside CPI reading, here is a massive upside uh, C CP oh, excuse me, upside CPI reading. So we don't know, right? We don't know. We're guessing, we're hoping, we're this, that, the third. But the most important part is we don't know where the market is, but we have to be prepared for both sides, right? And that's, and I, that's kind of the one thing I echo in every single video. Be prepared, right? We don't know what's going to happen, but be prepared. So if the data is telling you that 90% of the stocks are closing on the bottom of the range, right? And that's kind of where we are, right? You can see with your own eyes, right? We're closer to the bottom of the range to the top, then you're likely going to have or continue to have more stocks that are probably breaking down, right? So if you look at names like AMD, right? And we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. You can see AMD is below supply. It's starting to roll over. Look at Google, right? These are all NASDAQ 100 companies. These are, these are not, you know, some $2 stocks that people are manipulating, right? These are big heavyweight tech 
friendly, tech loving, financial, institutional friendly companies. And you know, Amazon starting to break down, right? You got you got Amazon very, very close, right? The only thing that saved it last time was this Bollinger Band here, this lower Bollinger. Amazon, again, at the bottom of the channel here, not good, right? You have, you have like Apple. Apple is only a couple of points away from the bottom of the range as well. So again, it's not the point of Apple's not a great company. We know Apple's a great company. We know Amazon's a great company. But the point is, if they start you know, taking down technical damage, big macro levels to the downside, and Powell cannot save the day this time around, the narrative of this market is gonna change. And, and again, if you are an aspiring trader, the faster that you understand, the faster you want to learn how to trade both sides of the market, the, 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 the happier you'll be in your transition for aspiring trading to professional trader. The longer you put off that the market, no matter what's gonna happen, the market's gonna go higher, maybe it does. But the question is, can you stay solvent, right? Can you say stop, right? And that's the name of the game. And especially, unfortunately, a lot of new traders, they come to this business, they come in with very, very uh, limited funds, right? Their, their money supply is not great. Uh, their exposure, their emotional levels are extremely high. Their, their lack of process is obvious. And everybody's come to the same business with exactly the same way. But the, the faster you learn to kind of, you know, look at the market from the reality that you have instead of the mar reality you want, that's when you start really accepting all aspects of the business. So of course, everybody loves Apple. I love Apple, you love Apple. I have every Apple product under the sun, right? My kids love Apple, but the point is it starts taking down this bottom range here, well, it's gonna go lower, and that's the whole point. So going into this week, again, uh, the big number on the upside on the Qs, or at least, uh, not a big number, but intermediate number, especially when the data comes out and Powell speaks, is this 286 level to the upside and this 278 level to the downside. Everything else is going to be noise. Everything else, you're probably trading cash flow both to the up uh, and to the downside. When you look at the SPYs, right? Look how close the, you know, the, look how close the spies are to this bottom range here. And again, again, it's the same thing as the Qs, man. This is not a great sign. It's not a great sign that the, you know, the banks that we covered, you know, last, I think it was last weekend's video, right? They're breaking down here, right? They're breaking, you know, banks, the, you know, it's not a good thing. They're, they're taking a lot of, you know, they're taking a lot of exposure into the spies. They're taking a lot of exposure into the Main Street index funds. So the point is, if this, you know, if they start cracking, right? Like, you know, if any close, uh, any single close on the spies below, you know, three ninety. It's not like we're ten dollars away, guys. We're you know we're only, you know, we're literally only what two three dollars away from that three ninety level. Any close below three ninety, then it's it's in a little bit better shape than the Nasdaq. But then it's going to test this fifty day moving average as well. The Dow, you know, it's not really uh, my focal point just because the Dow is only has thirty stocks. But you can even see the Dow, right? The diamonds. Uh, start confirming 334.72. You got you got some selling pressure as well. So the stage is set for next week. Again, we have Powell, we have uh, CPI, but more important is we have our levels, right? And no matter what you're trading, what type of trader you are, if you don't respect the levels, well, those levels are going to kick your ass, and that's the nicest way uh, I could possibly say it, uh, both on the long and short side. So again, instead of you know, instead of fighting with some random person on social media where you think Tesla is going to be three years from now, look at the chart. It's telling you where it could be tomorrow, where it could be next week, or where it's possibly not going to be because it's stuck in the middle of the ranges and all those channels need to conf confirm. So it's a very, very important thing. Instead of arguing and spending countless hours on message boards and on Twitter and all these different fancy, you know, websites talking about uh, what you think is going to happen what you think you're an idiot you're an idiot go kill yourself you don't know what you're doing work work on being a better self work on being a better trader hell work on be being a better human being i think it's a lot more time that you can spend better time uh making a, a better dent in your in your in your life adventures than kind of wasting your time fighting with people who at the end of the day nobody cares right nobody cares what you think nobody cares what i think nobody cares what you think it's all about price action it's either going to go up or it's either going to go down but isn't it important to kind of understand the dynamics of why something could go up, why something could go down, instead of arguing with somebody on the internet who doesn't care, doesn't even know that you're alive until 30 seconds ago. So be a better friend to yourself, take constructive steps into a being uh, a better human, a being trader, and time, right? Like we say all the time, time will solve itself out. So let's talk about Friday's pivots. Um, again, there was some good things. Uh, there was some things that stalled out. Uh, but that's kind of where the market is. Uh, test, uh, Netflix, again, the two strongest names were Netflix and NVIDIA. Netflix upgraded, uh, 321 needs to build. Uh, more important, Netflix got above 
uh, Netflix got above that 323 CPI high, uh, went all the way up to 329. You know, big move considering that NVIDIA, uh, I think NVIDIA, Netflix, and Workday, the only stocks at the top of the channel, is actually a really, really strong move on uh, Netflix. NVIDIA was great. Uh, 172.65 needs to build. Here was NVIDIA. Right here was Nvidia took out this 172.65 against it. It's a basic like they, these are basic charts. There's nothing you know. It's nothing. You know, it's, it, 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 there's, there's nothing crazy about these charts. These are basic daily charts. It took out the 72.65, uh, traded right to the top of supply here at 76. Uh, Microsoft never got the 248, 249. Again, here's my point. Uh, AMD held three times. If it builds below, can flush. Right, here's AMD. You know, NVIDIA is strong, AMD is weak. And look at the bottom of the channel. You know, one stock's at the top, one stock's at the bottom of the channel. Um, you know, this thing starts losing the 68 and a half, 68 level. It should get back down to 65, 66. That's where they were coming for um, next week's expirations. Uh, Apple, still big level here, I like. Uh, didn't get there. Uh, Tesla, Tesla was a nice little pop. Uh, rejected this morning, uh, 179.38. If it continues, it can stretch. Uh, that's what Tesla did, dead cat bounce. That's all it was, dead cat bounce on Tesla. It took out right here, this 139, uh, 179.38 level and traded right, clearly it's about supply, 182.50. Not a big move at all, but that was a dead cat bounce. Uh, NET failed, uh, NET failed. Uh, 51 only went up to 30 cents before the stock went down two. Uh, coin, I still like, did not get up there. And that is it. So that's it. You know, we're kind of uh, set up for next week. We know our levels. We have the game plan. We know uh, the events that are coming up uh, for this week. Again, notably is going to be the CPI number, which is violence. And then, oh, by the way, which is PAL violence times 10. Guys, have a great weekend. If you are joining us in the webinar, I look forward to working with you. If you are coming aboard, use this weekend to look at the, the workshops. It's about eight, 10 hours of breaking down the PS theory. It's completely free uh, and anybody has access to it. Again, our pivots for you, pivots are not for everybody, but again, they're pretty cool and a lot of us like them. Guys, have a great night. Have a great weekend. I will see you all on Monday. Take